Okay, how to avoid getting completely screwed. Okay, so to find 360 means in addition to monies from sales of the artist's recorded music, the company shares and other income, including touring and merch and endorsements and appearances in movies. Uh, many 360 deals have a catch-all phrase so that if your artist uh, writes a cookbook, you know, there would be a commission on that or wins a bowling championship. There'll be a commission on anything that the artist made in the entertainment business. Now again, this is not a management agreement. This is part of a record agreement where traditionally record companies would get you know, 80, 85% of the monies from sales of recorded music, but the record companies wouldn't get anything else. Every other income stream was sacrosanct, sacred. Not anymore. And why? Well, the first uh, 360 deal was a long time ago with Robbie Williams uh, with EMI. But in the last 10 to 15 years, they've become the commonplace norm. And the reason is the last factoid in our list here. Income from recorded music in the U.S. has shrunk from $14.5 billion in its heyday when I was at Sony in 1999 to less than $7 billion last year. And that's over a 75% decline in counting for inflation. The record companies need the cash. So they're saying, and this is their argument, they don't say, you know, we're desperate for cash. They give justifications that have some reasonable basis that 360 deals are fair because unless we invest in you, you're not going to become the household name you've become and get all that money from touring, which you would have never received because we invested in you to become what you've become and we deserve a piece of that success, especially because we can't sell records anymore, except for Adele. Uh, right? That's right. <laughs> Sell exception. I mean, Taylor Swift had like less than two million, and she's had, Adele's had seven million. You know, it's, uh, it's crazy. It, it's crazy, but very exceptional and very unusual. In the old days, not unusual. Right. Uh, so they also argue, argue that we're giving you a big advance. We're giving you tour support at the beginning of your career, career as a performing artist. Uh, you might have to open for a big act. When you're an opening act, you don't make much money. You might be losing money in the record finances your tour. And the label makes a great video. <coughs> so how to improve the deal? Net versus gross. Always try to convert to net. And I gave you this example before of uh, what gross could turn out to be. Gross could be grossly unfair. <laughs> Usually it is. Advances in cross collateralization. This is easier said than done. <laughs> but uh, depending on your bargaining power, I don't know if you have a, 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 a bidding war. You say, look, OK, you can have uh, my touring, but I want a million dollars up front. I want to advance. And if you get it, then it should not be cross-collateralized. So if the artist is unrecouped on production costs, uh, then the label should not be able to apply the red balance to the other income stream. Should not be able to recoup from unrecouped advances for each income stream, block each income stream. So no publishing. Uh, red label is not a publisher. Uh, each of the big labels have publishing affiliates, but the record label should not become the publisher. Now, where this it actually fits in is the production company masquerading as a record company. They're sometimes even worse. Big record companies will usually not try to get in publishing, but a production company, remember the two guys I was talking about? Right. The producer and the hedge fund guy? They might say, hey, by the way, we're your publisher too. That's really gross when I see that, but it happens all the time. And that would mean they would get 50% of the income and then they'd own the copyrights in the song. Ah, okay, carve outs and making the label work for it. Um, if you represent an EDM guy who's making 100000 a festival, you could argue to the label, look, you shouldn't touch that. The guy's making the money already. You didn't make it for him. You're not helping him. Uh, and then, as I said before, sometimes you get the label to work for it. So if the label gets a placement in a movie or you know, a television show, then they should get some money, but otherwise not. Or sometimes what you can do is make sure that you make sure that the record label only uh, agrees to commission a certain number, uh, a minimum number, after uh, the artist has gotten a certain amount of income. So, like the first hundred thousand right. dollars touring, yes. you know, the record label won't uh, commission right. that's anything right. over hundred thousand. They will, if you can get that, that's a good thing to have. Yeah, exactly. I agree.